Well, good morning everyone. Um, you join me, as you can see, on an extremely hot day. It's just after 9 o'clock and uh, I am at Welford Pools. Now, um, I visited this, this lake shortly after it reopened. Um, I think it's around a couple of years ago now. But uh, I'm fishing on what used to be the old Syndicate Lake. So this used to be back in the day a syndicate where they had the main day ticket water on one side and a syndicate lake on the other side. And uh, since the guys over at Bramblemere have taken this on, they've um, pretty much revamped it from scratch really. Um, they've made an exclusive higher lake out the back. They've obviously got the main main day ticket lake and they've obviously made this larger one <clears throat> uh, day ticket as well. Um, you know, stocked, stocked full of fish. And uh, yeah, I'm here to give it a bash for 24 hours. Luckily, there's a free little slot that I could jump into because there are a group of four other anglers on today. And um, like I say, it is absolutely roasting. It's a little after nine o'clock. It's probably mid 20s already. And as you would have seen from the footage, there are fish cruising around on the surface. And um, I've managed to get into the very first swim uh, in on the lake itself, just tucked us keep myself tucked away like I say away from the guys that are doing a longer session than myself and uh, hopefully I can try and nick one or two out of the edge or um, sort of even on the uh, on the floaters if the birds allow me to do so but um, but yeah it's like I say it's roasting the fish are moving around and it's only going to get hotter so uh, yeah with that I'm going to um, get the sort of barrow unloaded back from the edge I'm going to try and keep this session these 24 hours really really quiet around this front front bay area don't know if you can see behind me but really nice quiet little bay area fish are literally just over my shoulder mooching around in the main body of water and hopefully I can try and nick one or two out sort of maybe out you know look at the edges this is really mature overhanging trees you've got snags on you know snags in shallower areas on the other side so i'll probably give the floaters a go today and maybe sort of try and nick one out of the edge one or two out of the edges sort of like the day goes on and the evening draws on and uh maybe through the night but um yeah it's looking looking promising like i say the fish are active they are mooching around so at the moment they're not just uh not just static and soaking up the sun which is always good so look at that lot just over over my shoulder and if you can see that there's the old zoom. There's a nice group of fish there, milling around. I reckon they might just be up for, might just be up for a floater. So that's enough rabble. That's enough of an intro. Let's get doing something. Try and nick ourselves an early fish. As you may have guessed, with floater fishing comes the bird life. And with the bird life, chances disappear. So um, I've had to uh, move from where I got them going, just over here, because one of the guys is getting in the swim sort of just to the right of my shoulder. Um, so I did get them going down there. But um, like I say, swarm of seagulls come over, pretty much killed my chances. So I've got this sort of middle bit here and the swim that I'm stood in here. And as you can see, the ducks have also moved in, wherever they are, somewhere they are. Ducks have moved in as well, which is uh, starting to kill my chances of getting one off the top at the moment. I'm having to try and pull them in from far over in the uh, sort of like uh, lilies and bring them sort of closer and closer. But I can only do that with sort of three or four mixes at a time to try and keep these birds at bay because they're just annihilating everything they put out. And I haven't got the most patience at the best of times. So, um, so yeah, like I say, it's absolutely roasting. The fish are all over the top. The birds are making my life absolute hell. I've uh, not even kind of flicked a rod out yet because I've just not been able to get that opportunity to do so. Um, but I have, have seen a fish bosh out just over here, just off this snag. So I think what I'm gonna do is flick a, flick a lead over there, possibly for a rod for the evening. I think I'm gonna have a rod down in this margin, just as it literally as it drops off into the margin. 
um, I think I might have a rod in there for, for tonight. I might just bait it throughout the day because um, the fish were literally coming in, you know, as close as, as close as sort of like the edge of the uh, edge of the trees there. So they were coming in really close. And like I say, if I can just keep that quiet and just trickle some, trickle a handful of bait in there, just got a load of crumboily and stuff. Hopefully I might be able to nick one from, from down there when it drops off a little bit cooler tonight. But I think the day is going to be frustrating. I think I'm going to have to bear with it. I might be able to nick one, one or two throughout the course of the day, but we'll have to wait and see. So I'm going to try and get these fish that are milling around in this little bay. Um, try and get them a few mixers out if I can. And uh, yeah, we'll see what the next hour or two brings. Yes, the patience has paid off. If you know me, I'm not the most patient of people. And uh, I was probably five minutes away from knocking it on the head with the floaters and um, well, trying to get one off the surface. I wouldn't say floater fishing because I can't actually get any freebies out. But yeah, there is a nice little uh, scaly mirror sat sulking in that net. I'm pretty much just fishing with, uh, with the float and the single hook bait. I can't put any freebies out. I'm just getting annihilated by the, by the birds as you would have seen. But uh, yeah, the patience and perseverance has paid off. Thank God. Well happy with that. Tried doing me in here, underneath here. I get to get a rod right down. But uh, yeah, mega happy with that one. I am literally roasting stood here. Just waiting for that one opportunity. Float fizzes across the surface. And boom, you should have seen all the fish scatter. It's really quite cool actually to watch. But um, this, they've moved back in there. So uh, let's get this fish out, get it up for the camera get a bit of footage and get that rod back out and hope we can nick another one here we go then first victim of the session like i say i genuinely was about to give up but i'm so glad i didn't because uh look at this for a cool looking carp nearly a fully bar a few little patches of missing scales but look at that that's exactly why you come to uh welford pools and uh you can tell that the guys from over in Bramble Mere have introduced some mega, mega, mega looking fish. Look at this one. Scales for days. Like I say, taken on a single surface bait, just out there on its own, amongst groups of fish that kept coming in and out, in and out. And uh, yeah, finally, the reward of the patience paid off. It's, um, give me a good scrap, both on the mat and out in the margins. Fishing an eight pounder, eight pound bottom I really didn't want to give it too much pressure but uh, I'll just quickly fling it around this side so you can have another look like I say keep them drenched keep them absolutely drenched through and uh, you'll keep them nice and comfortable whilst on the mat but look at him <laughs> so whoa, so happy with that one absolutely made up and I hope it's uh, it's signs for the uh, next remaining hours of the session but what a mega looking fish Let's slip it back, see if we can nick another one. Wow, Scorchio. But we've had a fish, which is, which I'm buzzing about, you know, really pretty fish as well. But uh, it seems like with that, the fish have done the off. Um, I keep looking sort of every five minutes or so with the glasses on, but uh, you can usually see when they're here because they turn up in numbers, you know, packs of 10, 15 fish move in mooch around move out but at the moment it's a barren of any barren of any fish life whatsoever and then i've had a bit of a rethink and um and yeah i don't think i'm going to fish down in this in this margin i think what i'm going to do is have both rods down here the fish that have moved in three or four of them now have moved into this little bay area so they are slowly starting to make their way around believe it or not as the sun's moving around the fish are following it in so I think what I'm going to do because I'm using two rods on this session I'm going to get both the rods down there I'm going to flick one out just sort of underarm into this bay keep everything quiet keep back away from the water's edge <clears throat> and like I say just fish it flick a rod down there uh, pop up on there 
and just freebie out some baits like I did sort of uh, on my last video 10 12 15 baits dotted around and uh, a pop-up on that one and then uh, what I'm gonna do even though these overhead trees are a bit tricky to cast a lot of the fish seem to be congregating in that corner where that lily where those lilies are so <clears throat> I'm gonna uh, try my best to get within at least a rod length of it um, and fish again a pop-up on that one just so I'm fishing I'm presented the rigs are upright um, I can actually walk around walk around there um, and bait up right by hand off a, where is it off a little point so I can bait walk around there and take the bucket round and just scatter bait around it as well so I think with the like I say with the mass congregation of fish that keep turning up into these two different little areas I think that's going to be my best uh, plan of attack for the um, for the evening so, and, and obviously through the night in the morning. Um, as you can see, the bed's set up. Like I say, it's hot. I'm sweating. Believe it or not, float fishing, although you stood still, absolutely takes it out of you. And uh, yeah, I'm gagging for a drink. I've probably not been looking after myself as uh, much as I should be. Um, but like I say, I'm probably going to just keep getting up and down every five minutes or so, see if them fish have drifted back in. If not, like I say, I'm going to prep the two rods ahead of tonight's um, <clears throat> tonight's sort of spots and areas that I'm going to fish and uh, prep them up really and get all the disturbance out of the way, you know, mid-afternoon, <clears throat> mid to early afternoon, so it's all done and dusted and then it's just a case of flicking out the rods. So that's the plan of attack for now. Obviously it may change depending on what I see and how things go, but like I say, I brought three rods. I've got two going out for tonight. I've got one set up on the floater, so even though I've got these ready to go, I can still, if I see anything, just uh, use that one floater rod just to knock it around and see if I can pick an extra fish off before I actually put these two out for the night. So let's leave it there. I need something to eat and a drink, and I'll catch up with you a little bit later on. As I mentioned, gonna prep the rods, ready to get out onto the spots now. Um, <clears throat> just gonna talk you through what I'm doing. Uh, sort of terminal tackle wise really. If you know me, if you watched any of my videos before, I basically use a lead clip system. The quarter session pack has everything in it that you need and basically everywhere you go, you can pretty much use it and know that you're fishing safe and effectively. So. As like many venues, this venue has no leaders. So again, there's about a foot or so of tube in there. Down to the lead clip sleeve. So with that, the tube in goes into the lead clip sleeve. So that's all nice and flush. Down to the lead clip. I'm using a two and a half ounce flat pair just because basically I'm casting what 20 30 yards if that so don't need a massive lead at all so with that you just hoop would say hoop your lead onto the lead clip so you've got your lead clip as so you just feed the swivel onto the lead clip and then basically feed the lead clip sleeve just onto the lead clip. What you can do is just, just moisten it a little bit, helps it slide on. You only need to nick it on three or four notches, as so. And that goes on, like I say, really easy, comes off really easy, safe, effective, can't fish any easier than that. And then at the end, it's basically tied onto a quick change swivel. Now that allows me to unhook rigs quickly to get another rig back out onto a spot if I'm fishing sort of you know for more bites or if I'm you know if I want to get a fish out uh, you can easily unhook the fish in the net and just obviously leave the rig <clears throat> in the fish's mouth and then obviously carry it over to your mat so it serves a number of different purposes that quick link swivel but again for quickness for ease 
for changing rigs in case you want to say you know go from a pop-up rig to a wafter you literally have to hook it on to that little swivel and then uh, like I say once you've got your rig on just slide an anti-tangle uh, anti sleeve over the top and that's on there safe effective and you're ready to go so I'm gonna fish that I'm gonna fish that rod uh, that setup sorry on both rods just because it's like I say 20 or 30 yards out it's a safe effective setup a two and a half ounce lead on both because I'm just literally flicking it out and um, yeah that should hopefully if, the, when, if and when the fish move back down nick me a couple of fish and I'll be able to like I say land them knowing that this is an effective setup So very quickly before I get around the corner to uh, bait my couple of spots, my rigs for the uh, for the night, show you just basically what what I'm going to be using. Uh, let's get on the, get on the scoop. It'll be a bit easier. So as you can see there, we have got some um, krill and tuna, 10 mils and 15 mils, literally a handful of whole baits, uh, triple N. 15 mils, 10 mils, again another handful. There is literally more, probably 80% boily crumb, 10% krill, 6 mil pellets, and like I say, probably 10% actual, you know, whole boilies, 10 and 15 mils across both of those two uh, ranges. So, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is, like I say, get around there, bait it up. It's been slammed, absolutely slammed full of liquid over the last uh, 12, 12, uh, 12 hours or so. Last night I prepped all this, got it all soaking. Got some super fish oil in there. Um, got some triple N stick mix liquid in there. So some, you know, the oil that's really pungent and uh, obviously going to continually just keep plume into the surface, surface and just releasing little oil, little oil plumes <clears throat> and something to really draw the fish down onto the bait and the triple N stick mix with liquid is really sweet and sticky and will hopefully hold onto the bait a little bit more you know once they're down they'll be able to root around and really like I say get amongst all, all this uh, crumb and pellet and boily so I'm going to go around there get baited up and then uh, think about getting the rods out. at the moment that's going to be my left hand rod just literally going to underarm flick it down amongst where I see the fish um, fish bosh out earlier just in front of these snags I've just probably sorted out best part of I don't know 20 30 baits in there and I'm literally just gonna plop them around wherever no real you know no real spot in particular but just dot them around so that I know that the fish has got to move around from one to one and then hopefully come across my pop-up in the middle of them once they're out like I say on the on the late bed and uh yeah they're gonna come across that nice bright pop-up amongst all these other other baits so that's the uh that's the thinking for this one and then I've got to make my way around to the bank a little bit further where I can uh hop through a gate and hopefully then just scoop out a load of crumb and stuff like that and kind of kind of create a bit of a, a bit of a better bait to flip the other rod out onto so let's get these boilies out and we can make our way around to the other part of the lake after that first fish um, I've carried on and persevered with the uh, with the floaters 
or what I'll say floaters but like I say the, the surface fishing so like I say um, until around sort of like one uh, between sort of one and two and uh, the fish just as the day got on and it got warmer and warmer the fish just become more and more sort of lethargic less and less interested in the actual hook bait or any freebies that I did manage to get out and uh, yeah just look like they're more interested in getting that sun on their back and just having a little cruise around really um, I really couldn't buy another bite if I tried so with that you would have seen that obviously I baited up uh, baited up a couple of spots and the rods are now out um, the left hander has gone out to like I say the, just the bay area of where I am at the moment let's see if I can swing it round it's pretty much where I showed you earlier but yeah the sun is pretty much over my shoulder now so like I say the left hander went out went down for a really nice firm donk um, so I'm really happy with that one that that one's presented the right hand one because like I mentioned about the overhanging trees um, it's quite hard to get over to those lilies but uh, I reckon I got within a, uh, a rod length I reckon and uh, yeah I went around and baited that up as well so they're both out on uh, both out on pop-up rigs um, just switch the colours up match the hatch and, uh, and a pink one um, like I used in my last video uh, trim them down so they're uh, nice and trimmed down and uh, yeah not too blatantly in your face um, but yeah the rods are out on the dance floor like I say it's a beautiful evening and uh, I'm hoping that maybe I can nick a bite through the night when that temperature and that sun just dips down or possibly sort of uh, through the morning when like I say the, the rain and the clouds and stuff like that come in so yeah not really much to report not really much footage wise really to give you um, like I say from sort of 2, two o'clock onwards but, uh, but yeah the, the session is still young I've still got time, I've got well over 12 hours to try and uh, try and nick myself another fish or two if I can but um, I'm happy with that one fish so far, um, it's mega mega scaly fish and uh, yeah a pretty one at that so I'm happy with that at the moment but I do want to try and uh, like I say nick myself another fish or two before I have to leave tomorrow at 10am so I'm just going to kick back for the next, uh, next few hours until dark um, and see what happens really but yeah I'm hoping that I get a, a bite or two through the night or early morning so I'll keep you posted on that one but for now yeah I'm just going to chill and hopefully I'll come back to you soon tell from the lack of footage through the night uh, yeah nothing happened it's a little after five o'clock um, I've not long recently woken up and uh, yeah the, the rods remain static all night really um, I did hear a few bushes down this end so they were down here or, num or you know a few fish were were down here um, but nothing really happened to be quite honest nothing happened at all no liners, you know, no no single bleeps, literally zero. Um, this morning started to rain um, as it was sort of forecasted on the weather. Um, it's not actually raining at the moment, but we have had a uh, we have had a shower or two uh, through the early hours of this morning. It's just looking grey and sort of overcast at the moment. A good. 10 degrees difference in the temperature easy if not more at the moment and you can really tell that, that sort of uh, you know that heat has um, disappeared it's nowhere near as uh, sort of sticky and humid as it was yesterday so I've got until 10 a.m. so I've got what probably about four four and a half hours left before I have to uh, before I have to leave so I'm hoping that one or two maybe sort of venture down here and and just get across those two patches of bait that we put out but um, yeah only time will tell I suppose but uh, but yeah I'm hoping for another bite if not it has been really hard work this session so I'm happy with the one that I did manage to nick luckily but uh, but for yeah for now I'll leave it there I'm gonna get a uh, get a drink try and come round to the world and uh, 
yeah, see if we can um, see if we can look another fish for the last few hours. But uh, yeah, I'll keep you updated anyway. Last hour of my session, and as you can see behind me, the uh, brolly is empty. The barrow is pretty much loaded. Just going to leave that up till the last minute because. Uh, I'm worried that everything might get drenched wet through, which will probably be my luck if I take that down. Um, it's relatively dry at the moment, so I wouldn't mind it keeping it that way, just for ease of packing it away, etc. When I get home, um, obviously the rods are still out, but again, over the last few hours, nothing's really materialised, and um, yeah, although it feels much, much better for a bite. Uh, apart from the sort of like I say the shows last night there really hasn't um, there really hasn't been much happening this morning <sighs> don't really know what to make of that session I knew it was going to be hard anyway just from the conditions I know the four guys up the the right hand side of me they haven't had anything either um, <clears throat> say either they haven't had anything I've obviously nicked that one yesterday which I'm glad I persevered about uh, persevered with because it seems like bites really are hard to come by at the moment um, with like I say this really really hot weather and then obviously we're due a, due a bit of a storm today so they might be a bit more luckier because like I say the conditions are pretty uh, pretty decent looking like for uh, for today so if you got this far in the video, like I say, sorry it's not been crammed full of action. Uh, like I say, I'm happy just to nick that bite. As always, leave a comment below, um, put a thumbs up if you like it, and by all means, you know, come and interact with me over on any of my social media. I really appreciate you guys letting me know what you think of the videos, etc., etc. But for now, unless anything happens in the sort of next 45 minutes or so, I'm going to leave it there. You know, fingers crossed it does, but I'm not holding out much hope for now. I'm lucky just to kind of nick that bite and, and get out of here, to be quite honest with you. So, uh, let's hope one of them sing. But if not, I'll catch up with you soon. Thanks for watching. And the reason why, I said I was keeping that brolly up until the uh, rods were in. Just typical. That rain is starting to calm down.